In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to set up the Amada controller so that if you have two internet service providers, one will be your primary service and the second will be your backup service. And in order to do that, first we need to take a look at everything in my setup so I can get you guys a grasp of how it's all set up and how it should function. And then we'll take a look at the Amada software controller. But before that, let's take a look at our sponsor. Oviu and their magnetic RGB LED bars can provide four hours continuous light, are rechargeable, optionally motion sensitive, and can be mounted anywhere thanks to the magnetic mounting brackets. They are available in white and black, single or in three packs. Oviu produces computer mounts, technology brackets, gaming kits, and organizational solutions for home offices, commercial spaces, and more with every mount being 100% manufactured in the USA. Here's my AT&T fiber connection and Google fiber connection. I have two cables that run down from here to my ER8411. This black cable here is where my Google fiber connection is and that's my primary connection. And this blue cable here is to my AT&T fiber which will serve as our backup connection. The SFP plus modules I'm using are SM5310Ts provided by TP-Link. So now that we have an understanding of how my network is connected, let's go over to Amada. We're going to switch ourselves over to the out of the global view, if you will. And we'll go ahead and go to settings, wired networks, and on this internet tab or internet option here on the left, um, what we want to go ahead and do is go ahead and pre-set up our next LAN. So I'm gonna enable SFP plus WAN 2 because that's where I'll be plugging in my secondary internet connection. Go ahead, hit, go ahead and hit apply. Wow, I have trouble speaking sometimes. Now, it says it's, it succeeded, but generally what I've found is that this actually takes a few minutes to uh, become active. So if you just do this immediately, you may have some issues where it's not working um, as quickly as you might expect because it's a little misleading. Um, from here, what we're going to want to do is just go ahead and enable link back up here towards the bottom. And then we're going to set our primary LAN as SFP plus one because that is my Google Fiber service with one gig. And then I also want to set up SFP plus two as our backup WAN. Now we have two backup modes that we can select. Some of you will probably prefer link backup mode. This is probably better in the business sense. And what this essentially means is that with link backup mode, as soon as the primary connection goes down, it will continue using the backup connection uh, until the backup connection goes down itself. So it'll just permanently use the backup connection if the primary were to fail. Always link primary is the opposite, where it'll use the primary WAM connection all of the time until it goes down, and then it'll use the backup connection and then as soon as the primary is connected again, it will come back up. Now, where this can be dangerous is if your ISP is coming up and going back down and you'll be constantly switching back and forth between the primary and backup, especially if your primary WAN is like constantly going up and down, right? So that could cause some intermittent issues. Now for home use, it's probably fine to use always link. I'm gonna use always link primary because I don't, our internet here is very consistent. It usually doesn't go down and up, down and up, down and up. So I'm going to do that. Now, those are the two primary settings that you need to enable. So I'm going to go ahead and apply here as well. And one thing I think everyone should do as well is go ahead and set a primary DNS and secondary DNS. I have mine set to 1111 and 1112. And you're also going to want to click on the tab here, I suppose and do the same thing for your secondary. So that way, when the connections are establishing and everything's coming back up, you have some consistent services. So that way you're not having issues um, should some of your uh, devices join the network and then suddenly not know, excuse me, not know what DNS to use. So we'll hit apply again here. And now that we've made that, we can go ahead and plug in our internet connection. Uh, actually, but right before we do that, I do want to show you. So if we go to devices on our router, we can see it's currently not plugged in over here. And we can also see that the link is down on SFP plus WAN 2. So now let's go get that plugged in. I'm going to grab the blue cable here that leads to my AT&T fiber network and plug it into the second SFP plus WAN port on my ER8411. With our SFP plus 2 connection now established or our link plugged in, you'll see that it actually hasn't updated yet here on um, the Amada controller. 
And you also notice it still says configuring up here. And I've noticed that Amada's controller software is a little slow in setting all this up. So we'll hit the refresh button here to see if we get any changes. And there we go. So hitting it twice, now we show connected and we show both of our links are active. One other thing I wanna check is if we go back to the dashboard page, you might want to um, adjust your internet capacity and you'll see that we have WAN 1 and WAN 2 available now. So let's just go ahead and enter in this information here. So that way our Amada controller software is fully aware of it. And interestingly enough, it just adds these two values together and well there you go so let's just do a quick speed test real quick just to show you guys that i do have a connection now i should be getting much better internet than that but whatever so clearly things are working and i am on the primary connection so let's go unplug the primary connection to simulate an outage and see what happens. I'm gonna click on this black cable to remove my connection to the internet provided by Google Fiber. So we just unplugged our network connection from our primary WAN and you can see we're not actually getting any updates. This page has to be refreshed anytime you are expecting to see updates and I'm still not seeing any associated failures or any real notifications here. Click on network, there's the alerts that I was looking for. It shows that our WAN is down as of 4.03 p.m. So this is, um, definitely working actually I guess 5 508 p.m. So this is now you know updating um, as you would expect so you go over here to logs we'll see that our connection is down again and let's go over to devices click on our um, router you can see that this link is down but our secondary connection is up so let's go ahead and do another speed test and there we go, still running. It's a little bit slower now because I have a slower internet connection with AT&T. So there you go, it's uh, totally working. I still have failover internet and we can also scroll down here and see that WAN 1 is offline and our WAN 2 is active. Pretty simple. Let's go ahead and get my connection to Google reestablished by plugging the black cable back in and see what happens. Once again, we've restored our connection. WAN 1 is still offline. We'll go over to dashboard to look at our logs, click on network. Still hasn't updated, so let's give this the uh, good old refresh. No alerts about it reestablishing a connection. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to, so let's click on the actual logs. WAN 1, okay, this only appears to show us any errors and doesn't actually show us a reconnection. So. Uh, be that as it may, that's the current state of the Amada controller and what you can expect when, you know, switching from primary to backup and then from backup back to primary. And then again, if we do another test, now that I have detected that my connection's back online, we should be seeing the expected speeds. We're not getting that. It should be like gigabit, but that's a whole other issue. Anyway, we should be seeing higher speeds because my at t internet is much slower. So it all appears to be working and... That looks like it's good to go. And so there you have it. Things worked like you would expect. It was pretty simple and easy to use. The setup process is pretty simple, I would say. Nothing too complex. Not leaving too much the imagination or room for error, in my opinion. I do wish the dashboard would refresh a little bit better or maybe like even a pop-up notification option uh, could be had. So that way, if your connection does go down, and you have notifications enabled, it would just pop up on your screen, kind of giving it a more dynamic slash active feel instead of just constantly having to refresh the page. Aside from that, if it goes down, at least you know that there's really nothing that you need to do as an administrator because everything will just work. Now, of course, the only downside is if you don't have like a gray log server or email notification set up or anything like that, then you won't have any idea at all that anything happened, which is probably ideal, right? No one screams unless something's unplugged and not working. <laughs> so if it's plugged in and working, then there's no issue, right? I think that makes sense. Anyway, with all that being said, I want to thank each and every one of you for watching, and I will see you all next time. Peace.